In thermal physics, we have something called specific heat capacity. I want to show you by first defining what we just call heat capacity. Remember, heat is all about energy. It's an energy transfer. So heat capacity is the energy needed to raise the temperature of a substance by one degree Kelvin. But we have something called specific heat capacity, which is different. And the reason it's different is very subtle, but still important. It looks like it's the same definition, energy needed to raise the temperature, but it's important of a unit mass of a material by one Kelvin. It turns out that's the key thing, is that when you raise, let's say, one kilogram of a material, that's what we call the specific. So the specific part is all about having one unit mass. In other words, like one gram or one kilogram, one whatever. Now we have an equation that helps us with this. It turns out we have this equation here, Q. Remember, that's energy. That's the energy transferred, otherwise known as heat. Uh, and it goes like this, mc delta t. This is the equation that we use. This is the equation that governs this. So let's maybe define everything here. So Q, that's the heat. Remember, that's the heat that's measured in joules. Now we have M. M is the mass. So whatever material you're looking at is the mass, and that'll be measured in kilograms. Although, watch out, sometimes it's in grams. Now we have delta T. I'm just going to define that one there. That's the change in temperature. When we say a change, that means you know there's like a temperature 1 minus temperature 2 or the other way around. But we have a change in temperature. And that could be in degrees Kelvin or in degrees Celsius. And finally, we have this little c. This is not the speed of light that we often see in physics. This c is called the specific heat capacity. This is the one that we need. Specific heat capacity. Now, what kind of units do we use for this? Well, let's solve for C. Let's get C by itself here. So if I get C on its own, you see, we're actually trying to define specific heat capacity. So let's get it by itself here. Can you see? Ha, ha, ha. That we're doing C equals. Now, I want to get rid of the M and the delta T. Those are both multiplying it, so I divide them out. So I get Q over M delta T. This is just from the equation. Now let's look at the units of this. The units of Q are joules, and the units of mass, that's kilograms, and the units of temperature is Kelvin. So I could say it's in joules per kilogram per Kelvin. So those are the units here. So it would be joule, and then I'd say times kilogram to the minus one, times Kelvin to the minus one. So that's how we define it. And look carefully at the definition. It's defined as the energy needed per unit mass per one Kelvin. And look, C is defined as energy per mass per Kelvin. So it turns out the definition comes from this equation here that C is Q over M delta T. However, we like to use, uh, use energy. Uh, some people, you know, like to say physicists do it with energy. It sounds a bit naughty, but uh, there you go. So sometimes it's more useful to use it in this form here, Q equals MC delta T. That tells us about energy but it does still relate to specific heat capacity. That's the thing that we need. Now, specific heat capacity, this little C here, that is actually an intrinsic property of a lot of materials. So different materials have their own specific heat capacity. So for example, we might have something like water. Now water's is uh, 4186, and that's joules per kilogram per Kelvin. Now be very careful, if you're ever solving questions with this, sometimes they're going to give you the specific heat capacity in grams instead. So then you'd have to move the decimal over by 3, so it'd be 4.186 instead. Just watch out for this. I've defined it here with kilograms, some people do it with grams. Now iron, for example, that's another material, um, that's only 450 around. And it turns out that water's specific heat capacity is quite high. What this really means is that it takes a lot of energy to raise water's temperature by one degree Kelvin. In fact, it has one of the highest uh, specific heat capacities for common substances. And this actually is a reason why water plays you know, a major role in um, well, heat or temperature regulation. So actually, that's kind of cool. It's not really, a, uh, it's not really um, just by chance that water is so important. It turns out water has takes a lot of energy to raise its temperature, and that's actually a good thing. Now, it turns out the specific heat capacity of different materials, it depends on a lot of different factors, but one of the things is called degrees of freedom. 
Now, how do we actually solve questions? How do we actually use these in order to solve problems? The key to doing all of these, I really think it's important. What you do is, if ever you're given a question, um, in textbooks they like to say, you know, a material is mixed in with another material, and what will be the equilibrium temperature? Or maybe they tell you the temperature, and you're supposed to solve for specific heat capacity. But in any case, no matter what happens, if ever you have temperature changing, then you include a Q term. Now I'm going to show you in another video um, how to do this in practice. I'm going to show you with some numbers. So we're actually going to work with this equation and actually solve some things. But the main idea behind it is this. Look in your situation and look at who is losing heat. Remember Q is the heat. So who is losing heat and who is gaining heat? This is, this is how I solve all of these. So what I mean by this is that all you have to do now is just take a look and say, well, who is losing some heat? who's gaining heat and from those right there just keep them separate okay just keep them you know separate from each other but this is really what you're going to do you're actually going to um, write this down so I'm just trying to put this here in really really important things oops I think I have to go like this now I want to draw like this so Q lost equals Q gain this is how you solve questions so what you do is you take a look and say well let's see I've got a situation where this you know, some things are losing temperature, so I put them over here. I do a Q equals MC delta T term for any of the things losing uh, energy or heat. And I do an extra Q equals MC delta T for any other object that's gaining. And I set them equal to each other, and that's the trick to solving. So you're going to see later on when we do some examples in some future videos here that this is the key to doing all of them. You set it up like this. Say who lost temperature, so whose temperature went down, whose temperature went up. There you go.